Well, hello there. Welcome to the Thursday, July the 11th um, episode of Serendipity TV. I am delighted to be here with you, and I am rolling in here or sliding in here on, on two wheels. I've been taping canvases, getting ready for Jingle in July, and I let the time slip away from me, so I apologize for being a couple of minutes late. I hope you're having a wonderful day and that you've had some time to work on one of your projects today. Um, I have not put any stitches into anything yet. I'm hoping to do that tonight. I still have some stitches to put into Jingle, so um, yeah, I'm trying to get that little fella wrapped up and have it ready so that, golly, I cannot believe it. We're going to be meeting uh, all here together in Tuscaloosa in less than two weeks. It's actually a week from Tuesday, so if you're coming for Jingle in July, I have been taping canvases. <laughs> All right, so we have Celine with us, I see, and Susan. We have two Susans, Susan in Birmingham and Susan in um, Virginia. And Liz is here from California. So glad to have y'all here with me today. We're going to have so much fun talking about metallic threads. If you haven't had a chance to read the blog post over on the website, which is serendipitynedleworks.com, um, I'll try and include that link for you here in the comments. I won't take the time to type it now, but I'll definitely add that before we leave. Uh, there is a, a new blog post and it's all about using metallic threads and um, so anyway you need to make sure you read that because there's a lot of information there and I do also have a neat little downloadable that you can print out so it's here it is right here it's a neat little um, PDF that you can that you can click there's a button towards the bottom of the post and you can click on that button and um, it'll take you to to the place where you can get that so um, something you can print out and put in one of those plastic page protectors from Office Depot or Staples and uh, keep in your project bag so okie doke we're going to talk about metallic threads I'm going to take a sip of water really quick because like I said, I came sliding in here on two wheels just a second ago, so hang on. All right. Oh, goodness, Susan says, growing up on her street, there were four Susans. We have a lot of Susans. We have a lot of Nancys. Um, I'm trying to think, what are some of the other really common names? And I've actually been surprised. I always thought my name was, was not common at all. I'm named after my great-grandmother. And um, yeah, I always thought Ellen was just kind of a really obscure name. But we have a lot of Ellens in our Stitchers Club group and in our Serendipity Circle of Friends, which is our free Facebook group over, um, well, here on Facebook. That's where I am, right? I get, I get kind of lost sometimes with where I am. I forget we have the Serendipity Facebook page which is where we're broadcasting from or where I'm broadcasting from now and you're watching and then we also have a serendipity needleworks Facebook group which is a private group uh, that's sort of a, a I don't know it's, it's a, a place for people in the what I call the serendipity stitchers um, circle of friends it's where we gather and share our projects and encourage each other so it's totally free so if you're interested in joining that all you have to do is type in the search bar on Facebook serendipity needleworks and the um, the group will pop up there's a picture of some thread it's blue and green thread so um, that that gives you kind of a, a visual cue to um, be able to identify it and I'll also try and, and remember to put a link in here in the comments here so that you can also click on that link to request to join and there is a link on the uh, website for you as well inside I think there's one inside of this week's blog post so all kinds of different ways to, to find the, the Facebook group okay so oh we have Sylvia with us hello from Omaha I know those of you who are with me here in the southeast we're all kind of bracing this morning I woke up and they had uh, they had named the the whatever you call it, the disturbance down in the Gulf they named it Barry and I jokingly said to my husband this morning I've got now I've got something I can pick at our bro my brother-in-law about that's his name so anyway I'll have some fun with that for the next few days but hopefully everybody who's in the path of that storm is able to find safety and uh, you know get themselves to a, a, a warm dry place and out of harm's way and uh, if you are in in the path of that storm you know at this point it looks like the worst thing that's going to happen is going to be the heavy rain and wind and and potential flooding so if you are in that situation if you're where if you're in the path of that storm 
please, please, if they have mandatory evacuations, get out because it's not worth it. Last summer, I went through a, I think, a, what are they called now? I can't even remember. It was a, 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 a like a level one or whatever they call it, a, a hurricane down on the coast. And our house that just burned was where I was. And, and so it was on pilings. And I swore after that that I would never, never do that again. I thought, oh, this isn't going to be bad. You know, it's just going to be some high wind and some rain, you know. And it, I mean, this house is sturdy. We're good. Y'all, I rocked and rolled with that house all night long. That house just swayed and swayed. And then I got to thinking, what if the power goes out? That's when it was going to get really bad. Now, we were lucky we didn't lose power, but I decided after that experience, I wasn't doing that again. <laughs> so anyway, that's my little story about hurricane safety um, for, you know, for this, for this episode. Hopefully, we won't have very many um, this season and you won't hear me talk about them anymore. So, all right, what do you say we dive in and talk about some metallic thread? Sound good? Good deal. All right, so Carrie's with us too. She's popped in and so has Janice. So I'm glad to have y'all here with us too. Carrie, I was just telling everybody, I have been taping canvases, getting ready for Jingle in July. So it's gonna be lots of fun. All right, so metallic threads. You know that there are three main companies that you can get metallic threads from. Actually, probably two. I should back up and say there are two because Rainbow Gallery is one of them, and the other one is Chronic. Now, there's also a company um, you can get thread. This thread is Accentuate, and it's a metallic thread, but it's not as readily available. It's a, that little um, blending filament type thread. It's not as readily available as, um, as the Rainbow Gallery threads or the um, Chronic threads. So, we're not really going to talk much about this one today, but it is out there, and it comes in a huge assortment of colors. And, um, you know, I like working with it. I use it a good bit, but... Um, you know, I actually stocked up when Judith closed her shop up in Birmingham. I didn't carry this one in my store. And so when she closed her store in Birmingham, I made a trip up to Birmingham and I just loaded up <laughs> on all the accentuate that I could get my hands on. So, um, you know, I, I have quite a stash of this and it works really well. It's very thin though. So you do, if you want it to really show up well, if you're working on a, even on an 18 mesh canvas, um, you do add this in with, I, I guess you could stitch with it by itself, but I typically use it as a blending filament. So I add it in with like a silk thread or maybe even a wool thread like the Bella Lusso that we were talking about. Oh, with Stitchers Club. We were talking about Bella Lusso. Those of you in the Stitchers Club know what I'm talking about. We, we talked about Bella Lusso last night, but you can put it in with Bella Lusso and it, you know, it'll work really well to add a little bit of twinkle to the Bella Lusso. So, um... So anyway, accentuate. Now, let's get to the two main ones and primarily actually the Chronic because Chronic is the one that I use probably more than I do the Rainbow Gallery, but we'll do Rainbow Gallery first. So Rainbow Gallery threads come on cards like this. And, you know, what you'll find, um, this is Petite Treasure Braid. Treasure Braid comes in a huge, huge assortment of colors and sizes. So the smaller the number, that mean, the smaller the braid. So if you have a size 4 treasure braid, that's pretty much equivalent to a size 4 chronic braid. Same thing with the 8 and the 12 and the 16. You know, they have, they're pretty comparable in their size. Um, the color palette is somewhat different in Rainbow Gallery's threads than, than in the chronic, but uh, they do have some very nice colors. And I know a lot of shop owners, you know, m me being one, um, I, in the beginning, I carried both. I carried Treasure Braid and Chronic. And as time passed, I saw that my customers tended to lean toward Chronic. So I, I started limiting the number of colors that I carried in Treasure Braid. So if your shop doesn't carry Treasure Braid and they do carry Chronic, no big deal. And vice versa, if they carry Chronic and not Treasure Braid, you know, it's not a big deal because they're very similar in the way they're manufactured, if not almost identical. The only difference you're going to really find is in some of the colors. So, um, you know, it's just a um, it just a really, Rainbow Gallery makes wonderful threads. And um, so anyway, I, I just love them. So, oh, look, we've had some more people. 
Um, oh, I see my cousin Janice. Janice's parents, God love them, are down on Grand Isle in Louisiana, and they will not leave. They're they're part of the the folks that I've been keeping in my thoughts and prayers. So um, Janice popped in to say hello, and then I've got we've got Cindy and and Pamela and Carrie. So I'm so glad to have all of y'all here with me this afternoon. This is great. So um, another. Uh, thread that you can use um, in addition to treasure braid is the sparkle braid and the crystal braid any of the braids that you know you find from uh, rainbow gallery are going to be manufactured in or using the same process for the most part as the chronic braids so it's not really a thread when you hear the word braid that means that the fibers that are blended together to create the finished thread product are actually braided together like you braid hair if you've ever done a french braid or even just a, a standard braid the the fibers are braided together and so that gives it a stronger construction and um, so anyway sparkle braid and like i said any of the sparkle um, the sparkle threads that that you can get from rainbow gallery are also uh, very nice to use when it comes to adding a little bit of uh, twinkle to your canvas with metallic threads now this is the, I, I don't know if I should call it famous or infamous chronic spool. So the thing about the chronic spool that can either, um, you're either a fan of it or you hate it. Now, I think a lot of people don't know how it works. That's the reason they hate it. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a little trick here. And I tried to explain it a little bit in the blog post, but I'm not sure I did a really good job because it's kind of hard without having a, you know, uh, I mean, pictures, Pictures are worth a thousand words, but videos must be worth like 10,000 words. So if you look at the spool, uh-oh, okay, so we got a question here. Are the braided fibers the same or is it a mix of fibers? Sylvia, that is an awesome question. Um, typically, the fibers are of different kinds. So I'm going to back up just a second before I get to the chronic spool to answer your question. This is a very tiny little thread. Um, so I don't know that you're going to be able to see very much of it. Yeah, it's, the light's actually shining on it pretty well. So this thread, being a braid, when I divided it and I tried to kind of pick it apart last night so I could see what it was made of, you can see, now I think you're going to be able to see, that there are three, I'm going to do my best. Oh, come on now, cooperate. Here we go. All right, can't, wait, let me get it. Ooh, there you go. Can you see those three um, individual strands? Each one of those individual, oh, that's actually a ply. Each one of those plies is made up of two more plies. So there are six plies in this particular um, thread, which is Petite Treasure Braid. So one of the, uh, in each pair, one of them is metallic, so it's a metallized polyester. And the other one is um, a rayon. I'm pretty sure this one, yeah, the other one is a black rayon. So those two, the metallized polyester, which is sort of that rusty color, is twisted together with that black rayon thread. And they're, so they're twisted together like a, a standard thread is twisted together. And then you have three pairs, of, or three, yeah, three pairs, and they're braided together to create the finished product, which is that. So um, it's it, sometimes you end up with having multiples of the same fiber all braided together, but other times you don't. So it depends on, on which thread it is. But in this case, that's a prime example of there being a blend. Um, it, and even on this sparkle braid, I took this apart too so I could see the construction of it. And I think I cut that part off. I did. So I cut that part off, but it's basically the same construction. The only difference is this is six ply, but um, and it's a non-divisible thread. So anytime you have a not what's called a non-divisible thread, that means that you're not supposed to take it apart. DMC cotton embroidery floss is a divisible thread because you can take the strands out and use as many as you need. Uh, one of these threads, one of these metallic braids, these are non-divisible, so don't try and take them apart because then it will just shred. But this one, the sparkle braid, this one right here, is made up of, there are four metallic strands and two that are more of a satiny finish. Um, yeah, it's polyester too because this whole, this whole thread is made out of 
um, polyester, but part of it's a metallized or a metallic looking polyester, and the other part is a more of a, it looks almost like a, a silk or a rayon thread. And so those, there are four of those of the metallic looking and two of the ones that are more of the silky shiny looking ones and those are braided together to make the sparkle braid. So you're going to have a varying um, combination of the different types of fibers that are braided together to create your finished product. That's a great question. Okay, so, um, oh good, I'm glad that made sense. Good deal. Okay, so now when you're looking at the chronic oh dear i've done it again i do this all the time when i you know when i want to demonstrate something i always pull the wrong end do you ever do that when you get ready to go pull the spool uh, you know pull your thread off the spool and you pull the wrong end and then you end up with a mess <laughs> that happens to me all the time okay so here we go let me get this little guy fixed that's he's supposed to be up here so we're going to hold him in place. I was talking about the spool, and so let me show you. And, of course, I didn't grab one that's the, the bigger spool. Um, 16 and 32 braid from Chronic are on a different kind of spool than the smaller braids. So this is a size 12. Yeah, this is a size 12 tapestry braid. Let me hold it up so you can see it. Okay, there you go. have to look at my screen so I can see if you can see, so I can see what I'm showing you. Okay, so we have this um, spool and what you what you see both ends and I'm going to actually pop the end on this one let me hold it up okay so you can see that if I'm going to put my thumbnail under the edge of the spool because there is a little can you let me see what do I have can I can point with here you can see there is a little right right here this little slot right here this is a this cap will lift so that and you don't want to pop it off. And I need to tell you, you don't want to pop that off because if you do, then it won't work right. But um, so what you can do, you can pop that little cap up and then you can wrap the thread around the um, cap uh, or underneath and then you can push that little cap back down and that cap will hold the thread um, in place. So and let me just show you really quickly how it works. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to pop this little cap up. And I have this loose piece of chronic that's just, you know, there, hanging there. And if I want to keep this from unraveling or come from unrolling in my bag, my project bag, because have you ever had that happen where the whole thing just starts to, you know, come off like that and then you have a huge mess? Well, the easy way, the easiest way to keep that from happening is to, you know, of course, if you've got it that's already started coming off, wrap it back around, you know, get it around the spool. And then once you have that cap popped out, take the thread, I think my fingers are in the way, take the thread and wrap it around. See how I pulled on that and it, it snugged it down in that little slot? Once you do that, then you push that cap back down and that'll keep the end of the chronic from going nuts in your bag, from rolling off the, the, the reel or coming off the reel. And that keeps it, you know, once you cut off what you need, then you can wrap that little end underneath that spool cap and that'll hold it in place. So that's just a nifty little trick that's easier to show you how to do than it is to try and write it out in a blog post. So I wanted to make sure I showed you that today. Um, and then, like I said, the the Chronic 16 and 32 braids, those and, and the bigger the bigger spools, they have what's called a flange locking system, where it doesn't the cap doesn't pop off, but there's a little um, slit, I guess, or plastic slit. Uh, well, it's not the whole thing is plastic, but there's a slit in the plastic that you can wrap the thread into and and pull it and snug it in place so that it won't come un, unraveled or un, un, um, rolled either. So let's see. Um, Susan says, learning what I wish I had known or remembered before I started the sky on my nativity scene. Um, okay, all right. So let's see. She says, I'll use my laying tool and go up a needle size. Good deal. So yes. Um, definitely, if you're using more than one thread, you know, if you've got a blending filament that you're holding together with another thread, then you know you definitely want to make sure that you um, that you have 
a laying tool that you can lay both of those threads over and something that you have to be extra careful with when you're using a blending filament or holding like you can use sparkle braid as the as a blending filament and hold it with um, you know, with Bella Luso or Splendor or whatever but you want to know uh, ahead of time or be forewarned that um, you know sometimes because those threads have different textures when you pull them through the canvas um, they're going to try and, and go at a different rate. Sometimes the metallic tends to drag on the, um, on the canvas mesh and uh, especially if you have maybe a little, if it's a little thick. So some, a, a trick to use is to use a bigger needle than you typically would use. Say for example, if you're working on um, an 18 mesh canvas, instead of using a 24 needle, use a 22. Um, if you're working on a 13 or 14 mesh canvas, then, you know, if you're using a 22, then go up to a 20. Uh, yeah, th because the way that the numbers work on needles, and this can be, it seems counterintuitive, but the larger the number, the smaller the needle. So in other words, a 22 is smaller than a 20. So if you want a bigger needle, then you're going to need to go up to a 20, but the number size goes down, the number goes backwards. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. Um, so now Liz has, um, oh, okay, she says she's using chronic and vineyard silk held together, just has a tiny bit left of frog. That's great. I'm so happy for you because I know you were so ready to be finished with that. Uh, Susan's working on a little nativity and was doing the night sky and decided she didn't like the way she lo it looked, so she um, decided to, to frog it. So she's nearly done. That's great news. All right, so Liz says, what's the difference between regular chronic metallic and the spools that say bul bulger, bulger? I'm not really sure, honestly, how you say that. So it's been my experience that the ones that say bulger or bulger, and I'll have to look that up. I'll have to or, or call my friend Dina at chronic and say, hey, what's the right pronunciation of that word? Um, so basically, that is um, the blending filament. And when I say the chronic blending filament, y'all, not my favorite project product. Um, the reason being, it's so so thin, and I used it really a lot more when I did counted cross stitch. I've never used it in uh, needlepoint. I've always used just a standard metallic thread if I needed, you know, something that was really sparkly. And if you wanted to blend something, then of course you could definitely use these two um, rainbow galleries that I was talking about. Um, but if your store, if your local needle workshop doesn't sell a blending, uh, sell the rainbow gallery, then you're going to want to use that blending filament, or you could use the accentuate if they carry the um, accentuate. Now. Um, the the something to keep in mind chronic makes braids that are very small size 4 chronic braid is considered very fine and it works really well for delicate and lacy um, highlighting on 18 mesh canvas and you you really I would suggest if you have the opportunity to do it get yourself a, a spool of each size maybe a 4 an 8 a 12 a 16 uh, there is actually a 24 which is not very commonly found and then a 32 and get you you know get you a spool of each one and then just play around with it to on a doodle canvas so that you can then see you know what some of the looks are that you can achieve with the different sizes of um, of braid and or you could do the same thing with the with the uh, rainbow gallery you can get different sizes because the rainbow gallery comes in different sizes too so that would be my my best suggestion on if you're not really familiar with or if you haven't worked with metallics different sizes of metallics much you know get yourself some samples and, and if you don't have to get all of them but I mean if you have the opportunity to, to do that um, especially if you have to travel to get to a needle workshop and they have a nice variety I you know I definitely stock up and at least get me one spool in each size so I could play around some um, so let's see I think let me check and make sure I don't have any more questions over here all right I don't see any more questions does anybody else have any questions because we are about to hit our 30 minute mark I cannot believe that went by so fast um, does anybody else have any other questions about metallic threads remember if you do now and, and remember it takes me just a minute for your comments to pop up for me to see so you know type them in there and and if you're watching this as a as a recording or as a replay 
make sure you leave your questions anyway because I will be happy to come back and answer those after the recording is posted inside the Facebook uh, on the Facebook page so um, I do oh one thing I do need to make sure that I tell you if you are going to use metallic thread use a pair of scissors that is an older pair of scissors don't use your really really good embroidery scissors to cut metallic threads because they'll dull the blades really really fast and you will wreck a wonderful pair of embroidery scissors so I just have a dedicated pair of old embroidery scissors that I use to cut my metallic threads with you can also get and I didn't bring them in here but they're these tiny little they're called super snips tiny little scissors and I mean they're like six excuse me six dollars for a pair five or six dollars for a pair and yeah they have a little plastic protector cap on them so you can pop them in your project bag and you don't have to worry about it anything poking a hole in your project or in your bag itself they're super handy and you know they'll cut for a long time so I would use you know maybe something like that and uh, and then save your good scissors for cutting silk threads and wool threads and cotton threads because if you if you use that like I said on those metallic threads you're going to dull the blades on your good scissors really fast and I don't want you to do that okay um, so Cindy says any comments about accentuate so yeah I do so accentuate so here's the here's the deal with accentuate oh and this uh, let me show you this cap so this is a different kind of a cap all right let me get it un unwound here so it's the same principle you know it's going to come off the spool but it doesn't curl or kink as badly um, so what you do is you wrap it back around just like this and then in the end of the spool there's a slot that is a very narrow slot and what you can do is is line the thread up with that slot and then pull and that'll lock that thread in in that cap so that it doesn't come um, un, unwound in your bag so they have a similar type setup now this I don't know yeah this top pops up too it does I had forgotten that so you can see it pops up and then you could wrap it around and then pop it back down so and that's actually probably a better demonstration of how the chronic cap works the chronic cap works exactly the same way so um let's see the any comments okay so back to accentuate so accentuate is really tiny so if you want to use it for example with silk um, maybe with splendor or I'm trying to think of some other silks that yeah uh, needlepoint ink silk um, if you want to use it with a stranded silk then I always use two of the accentuate with say if I'm working on 18 mesh canvas I'll use I'll double the accentuate and use two of instead of just one because one just is not going to show you're just not going to see it so you definitely need to use um, a couple of strands of accentuate um, for it to even show up now I, you know if you wanted to use all accentuate which you definitely could you're just really going to it's going to depend on what the look is that you're trying to achieve you would have to um, you know just play with that on a doodle canvas if you have a um, if you're trying to get full coverage as opposed to um, you know just light coverage I mean, it's, it you just have to play with it to, and, and try the number of strands um, in your needle until you get the um, the look you're trying to to achieve working with it Ooh, you know it's just like any other metallic you just have to go slow you can't work with metallic threads fast you're, you're just you'll get an exercise in frustration and something that you want to always make sure that you do um, too is is let it untwist because if you're working with multiple strands of, of thread and this goes for any thread multiple strands of thread in the eye of your needle are going to get twisted around each other so you have to let the you know, turn your project upside down and let the needle untwist um, and or let the thread untwist that's in the needle and um, you know that's I mean that just is just a, something that you just need to do on a pretty regular basis and I usually do that about every five or six stitches depending on what kind of thread I'm using okay um let's see and Cindy if you have any specific questions I'm getting as soon as we finish here um, at four o'clock central time we're going to hop inside the stitchers club Facebook group so um, if you think of any questions specifically about accentuate that you'd like to ask um, you know jot those down and and we'll talk about those in just a little bit um, and if you can't join me for that then uh, you know shoot me uh, some questions either in a private message or go ahead and post them inside the stitchers club Facebook group and I'll try and address those during 
during our time together here in a few minutes. Okay, so, oh, I'm glad, Pat, that you found the tip about the old scissors um, helpful. And, all right, now, I hope I don't butcher your name, El Elvina or Elvina. I'm happy to have you here with us today from North Carolina. So, um, anyway, and yeah, I, like I said, if you have a question, please, please do post it in the comments. Um, if you're watching this as a recording, go ahead and post them anyway. I'll be happy to answer those questions. I do keep an eye on the recording and when and the comments and things as they pop up, especially over the course of the next two or three days I'll be doing that. And then, um, yeah, I try and keep an eye on something. If a question happens to go unanswered, just, you know, tag me or shoot me a private message over in Facebook and, I, you know, say, hey, what about, you know, XYZ question? Uh, because sometimes they do slip past me. So, um, you know, but I, I do want to make sure that I'm here to help guide you um, in developing your needlepoint skills because that is super important to me. I want everybody to feel confident when they sit down to work on their, on their projects, and uh, I'm just happy to help. Thank you ever so much for joining me this afternoon. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and that you have a chance to put some stitches in a project. Until next time, uh, happy stitching, and I'll see you people in the Stitchers Club in just a little bit. Bye for now.